Guardians quarterback Matt McGloin is your classic underdog story. A walk-on in college, an undrafted free agent in the NFL, and he's not done yet. When you play professional football, you get released sometimes. You go through stages where you, you doubt yourself and you doubt your abilities. But for me, I've always been able to grind through it. When I wasn't playing the game, I missed it. I don't ever think I've been playing the game harder than I am right now. I really like Matt McGloin. He's a baller. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. The guy moves in the pocket seamlessly. He's more athletic than you realize, and he does a really nice job of placing the football. Honestly, Steve, if you look at the 32 backup quarterbacks in the NFL, I think he's absolutely in the mix. I really believe that it's just about circumstances, and here having an opportunity to lead a team that's only two hours from where he grew up. Very excited for this opportunity. They just barely get it away. McGloin off his back foot, trying to hit the receiver coming out of the break. Could not hook up with Joe Horn. And third down conversions were a problem a week ago. Amazing New York could win last week, going one for ten on third down. Yeah. 97 red. We'll watch for him and the impact he'll have early. Coming off that edge. And they throw in that direction. Able to complete to Mikhail McKay. But Desmond Lawrence made sure he couldn't get to the sticks. It's going to be fourth down. That's clearly in front of them. And you see, McGloin is pleading his case. First down and 10 across midfield now. Here's McGloin loading up and firing. Looking for Joe Horn was looking to his right. It was over his left shoulder incomplete. Just an inaccurate throw there from McGloin, but Horn could have been just a little bit wider on the seam route. It's on the team. And he was one of the guys involved, so you got to be smarter and allow cooler heads to prevail because if he would have gotten tossed, the Guardians would have been in a really difficult spot with their offensive line depth. Here's McGloin trying to take a deep shot. Mikhail McKay, big play McKay. Prior to the opener, had a lower body injury, came to camp banged up. McGloin had all sorts of time. There's the deep shot, and it's picked off. Intercepted. Matt Elam is there, the former first-round pick of the Baltimore Ravens. And that was an easy interception for Elam. Second turnover of the game for the Guardians, who didn't turn it over a single time a week ago. Nothing there as McGloin drops back, surveys the field, doesn't like it, throws it late. Easy stuff there from Elam. As Matt McGloin, Matt, walk us through that progression of what led to the interception. Yeah, uh, just a poor decision on my part. Uh, you know, hey, we got to continue to push forward here. It's only a one-score game. A lot of self-inflicted wounds. You seem to have a hard time getting in a rhythm on offense. How do you fix that? Yeah, I mean, we just, like I said, got to continue to push forward, uh, you know, operate the plays that are being called. Um, and, you know, it starts with me. Thanks, Matt. All right, thanks. Just a force there from McGloin. Can't make mistakes like that, especially when you have a ranging safety like Elam in the back end. <laughs> Dallas is built similarly. McGloin again has great time, has a man open, and Austin Duke just could not come up with that football. Tyree Kinnell had the coverage there for DC. The ball is just way off the mark, but like we were talking about in regards to Houston and, and what we might see from St. Louis, he's able to play and contribute in such a short period of time. Fumble off the snap, and McGloin able to recover it. Or not. DC is pointing in the direction of their football. Looks like a pretty good snap. And they go with a backup center in Damian Mama. That's a bit low. Yeah, a bit low, but one the quarterback you would think would be able to corral. In fact, every play is under review in essence. Just get that one away on third and 13, and McGloin is throwing it away. And Matt McGloin is 3 of 11, and a flag comes out. Might get McGloin for yes. intentional grounding. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go spot of the foul. All right. Intentional grounding. Offense number 14. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. Never got outside the tackle box. And so McGloin's struggles continue. 
I'll tell you what, Greg, this D.C. defense starting to get a beat on this New York offense, and they're pinning their ears back and coming after them. Yeah. They got a feel for their protections, for yep. sure. With Two minutes. Second down and six. Here's McGloin. Get some pressure. Again, just trying to get rid of it there. Tom. Hey, guys, you know, one of the things that I'm noticing evaluating the sideline with New York is there's a real frustration level with Matt McGloin right now. And there seems to be a disconnect between McGloin and the coaching staff in terms of the direction and the philosophical approach they're taking versus this defense. Now, compounding problem is that right now they don't have an answer for blocking D.C., and that's making things work. They're going to have to come up with some answers at halftime. They've had guys open. I mean, G.A. Mangus has gotten guys open a few different times. McGloin hasn't been accurate, so I think equitable blame to spread it around. Forced them out of bounds in the special team stop. What a, what a difference Matt McGloin from a week ago when he said he was having the most fun playing football he's had in a long time. And as uh, Tom reported earlier, you can see the frustration starting to boil over a little bit here. We approach halftime. He's just 4-12 with 27 yards and one interception. If you choose. Bit of a low snap again. And flags. Fall. Looks like there was movement on the left side of that line. Uh, this is a runoff. Hey, this offensive is a runoff. penalty. Do you guys want the runoff? If it's an offensive penalty, it'll take 10 seconds. I, I off know. The I'm runoff. asking if they want the runoff. They want to take the timeout. Uh, what number do you have, Rob? Going to steal John's thunder. Ball start. Here. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Still second down. New York has taken a timeout to avoid the 10 second runoff. The clock will start on the snap. Did, didn't really have a decision there. There's only nine <laughs> seconds left in the half. So if you want to at least have one more play, well, you got to burn that time out. Just get something. I mean, get a little rhythm. I mean, get something going offensively. You haven't done anything hardly. You have plenty of missed opportunities. So. Nothing doing. And the point will be dropped by Jay Bromley. Former Syracuse star on the sack. You're going to see a little cross action right here as they work out. You see that X on the right side of your screen between the defensive tackle and the defensive end. And two of the more disruptive defensive linemen in the entire league get home. As Anthony Johnson makes his presence felt, Bromley gets all the credit with the sack. And the half will come to an end. Diana. Matt, what does this team need to do on offense to get something going here? We need to change the whole entire game plan at halftime. Okay, what do you need to change about the game plan? What are you frustrated about? There's just a lot going on right out now. Uh, it's embarrassing for us here as an offense, so a lot of things we want to fix and correct. Thanks. Wow. Change the entire offensive game plan. Going, and these are short half times. Ten minutes on the clock. It ain't over. <laughs> Better go burn some chalk. <laughs> Matt McGloin really struggled in the first half. Was not accurate. Did not make great decisions, including this one. We just kind of threw up a prayer to Matt Elam that was easily intercepted. His frustrations very obvious throughout the course of that first 30 minutes. And Matt McGloin's uh, interview with Diana Rossini heading off to the locker room at halftime was, I mean, that was substantial. Rarely do you hear a quarterback say, we got to change the entire offensive game plan going into the second half. Guys, I talked to head coach Kevin Gilbride about Matt McGloin's comment saying that the play calling is an issue. And I said, coach, in all my years of covering football, I've never heard a quarterback say that. And he says, well, that makes two of us. I need to go talk to him and figure out what the problem is because he needs to play better. Greg, you alluded to that as well. There's plenty of blame to pass around for that first half by the New York offense. Second down. I can tell you, fellas, that conversation just happened right next to me. Kevin Gilbride pulled aside Matt McGloin real quickly, had a little, you know, a little face to the ear conversation. Looked quiet, but probably the message was sent. And the quarterback, you got to be the same guy. After a touchdown, after an interception, you got to be the same guy. Yeah. And you can't show those ranges of emotion. Look, it happens. We're fiery. We're competitors. It's to be expected. But you have to be able to live to play the next play. You can't worry about what happened because he's 100% right. There were open receivers that McGloin wasn't able to hit. And to bring up a third down. And McGloin is, you know, the veteran presence, right? He's that guy. He's the 30-year-old with all that NFL experience. Went into Oakland Raiders camp as the fourth stringer that season. Week 11, he's starting in the NFL. And uh, trying to remain cool and calm. Again, after everything went so well for this team a week ago, they've really struggled here. 
As for Matt McGloin in that first half, not a whole lot of highlights for him. It was really a struggle. I mean, just countless mistakes. And from a veteran guy, you just don't expect to see it. He's got to be your rock. And he's passing up on open receivers. He's getting a little greedy. He's getting frustrated. He's showcasing that frustration. And that has an impact on the entire roster. So it's going to be very important for him to get back on track and to get in a rhythm so he can get back in this game. Bit of a low snap again. McGloin intercepted. He's picked off sideline Jameer Thurman to the house touchdown pick six for the DC defenders they got one a week ago and they've got one in week two as well defenders score on defense Diana Matt continued pressure issues up front what led to that interception and it's a poor decision by me I just got to learn to take the sack though what do you do with the rest of your teammates to get yourself in rhythm, get your confidence back? Got to keep playing. You know, keep pushing forward, keep focusing on, on the game plan and the plays that are calling, trying to execute those. Thank you, Matt. A lot of self-inflicted wounds here for New York. Back out to the break. Just got that one away with zeros on the play clock. Coin loads up. And misfires on Mikhail McKay. And they'll bring it there. 40. It goes as a 41-yard punt. McGloin to Cook. Forget about it. Nothing doing. Jonathan Celestine makes the big stop for the defenders. Loss of three on the play. And they're going the wrong way. And Gilbride said, wait, we got to get some screens, and that'll slow that pass rush. Yeah, so much for that. Uh, you see Celestine all over it, recognizing it, and making the play in the backfield. Matt McGloin stands all by himself on the sideline. Another missed opportunity. He had a sluggo here. I mean, a sluggo, and it is absolutely to the house. Slant and go, of course. A slant and go. And you listen to his head coach, Kevin Single Gilbride. High. You got him. Oh, he went the wrong way. Oh, my God. He got a touchdown. And it's been that over and over and over again. Matt McGloin just hasn't been on the same page with his offensive coordinator, G.A. Mangus, and Kevin Gilbride right there. If he hits that sluggo, that slant and go to the left, it's a touchdown. There's been three or four of those throughout the course of this game that it could, could have completely altered the way he's feeling on the sideline right now. Lots of frustration on the New York side, Steve. Matt McGloin has been walking up and down the sideline by himself. Offensive coordinator George Mangus came over. He informed him. He said, we're switching that quarterback right now. And he was not happy. McGloin walked off. And again, he's just standing by himself. He's just not seeing the field today, and he's not executing the throws. I mean, I think Matt McGloin's a heck of a player. I really do. So sometimes it's not your day, so sometimes you got to look at another guy, and maybe Marquise Williams will provide a bit of a spark. Matt, I, Matt, I know it's been tough for you today. Not not your day at all. Uh, in, in terms of going forward here, what adjustments do you want to make for your play? Uh, well, I think we need to make a lot of adjustments, make a lot of changes. Uh, just, I mean, to be honest with you, this is probably the worst, one of the worst games I've ever been a part of, you know, offensively. Uh, so uh, it's back to the drawing board, back to square one. I mean, when you win like we did a week ago, it hides a lot of your problems. And, you know, when you play a good team like White D.C. today, you, you can get ex exposed very quickly like we did. You say there's some issues going on. What, are, what stands out to you right now in terms of how this play calling is going? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, there's a lot of stuff going on behind closed doors. You know, I think we need to clean that up. Communication especially is one. Um, and it showed today just at no point in time that I think – we were comfortable out there. At no point in time that I think we were in a position to try to be successful. So and it's, I think it was pretty easy to see. Yes, but it's only week two, Matt. So you got a lot of football left. And I was mentioned the bus trip. This will be a long one. This, will, this, will, this feels like this is the start of a very tough week for the New York Guardians. A lot to figure out. A lot to clean up. 